Good morning, and I hope you're all having a great day. Apologies, I couldn't be there in person today. Uh, I've had to arrange a last minute birthday surprise for the weekend, but I hope you're all having a good morning. I'm Martin Rennie. I work for the agricultural consultancy sector of the firm for Galbraith, carrying out a range of work from advising farmers who are under uh, pressure financially, from advising farmers and landowners how to progress forward and look at different options for their farming business. So we carry out a range of work within this sector of the firm. And, and right now it's uh, something that we're very, very busy with. In terms of smallholders, we get involved with smallholders in a variety of ways from the um, property uh, sector of the firm to myself advising on uh, grant opportunities and in hand farming opportunities as well. So we very much have a great involvement with the smallholder groups and and farmers across the across the country. Galbraith and itself, we have offices in Elgin, Inverness, and now in the north of England in Hexham, in, in, in Hexham and Hexham and and Blagden. So we, we have a, a wide coverage across the UK. So I'm going to start my talk today and I'm really going to base it on a case study and I'm going to base it on my own case study actually and that myself and my wife we purchased a small holding in February of last year a 12 13 acre small holding uh, in the central belt uh, the 13 acres uh, has is just permanent grass with a small area of woodland and we have a house as well um, and literally that is all we have. And we started in the 1st of February last year with wind, snow, rain and sleet in the very day we moved in. So we immediately faced a lot of challenges right from the get go. Uh, and I must say, you know, we, we bought the firm, the, the, the holding through Galbraith. Uh, Galbraith for marketing and selling it. Uh, and we had a, a great experience working through that process with them. Uh, I must say, if you're looking to buy a small holding, I think it's vital to have a, an agent representing you who know, has experience and knowledge of the sector, as well as the appropriate accountant and lawyers, because uh, their adv advice is essential going through the in conveyancing and buying process. And from experience, uh, the solicitor we had representing us pointed out some great um, points going through the process. So I'm going to really start from, okay, we had a 15 acre holding, got a house, bare land, nothing. What are the, what are the opportunities? What are the first steps? So in a, in a permanent grass holding like this, you first immediately think of grants. And what grants are there available to my wife and I who are wanting to start a small uh, farming uh, operation with horses, uh, sheep, cattle? And, and one of the, the immediate options is through the basic payment scheme. Now, the basic payment scheme has a minimum uh, area requirement of three hectares, and it's a direct subsidy payment, and it's paid on a per hectareage basis. So effectively... Uh, it is paid on a, a land area for every hectare that you own. And in Scotland, each hectare is split into three regions, regions one, two and three, with region one being the better quality grazing ground and region three being the poorer quality grazing ground. Region one attracts a higher rate, per he rate payment per hectare, with region three attracting a lower payment per hectare. So in our case, the 15 hectares was all, the 15 acres, sorry, was all classed as payment region one. So that attracts a, a payment of roughly 80 to 85 pounds per acre. To be eligible for that, you must be a new entrant or indeed a young farmer under 41 years of age to be eligible. In addition, you need to be carrying out agricultural activity, which can simply be uh, rear, rearing and having economic responsibility for livestock uh, or simply maintaining and enhancing the gates, gateways, troughs and water troughs across the holding. So immediately we identified an opportunity through that and applied for the basic payment scheme this year 
The deadline for that is the 15th of May each year. Uh, we had to provide evidence such as driver's license, proof of economic activity, uh, proof of the livestock we had, I'll come on to that, uh, and, and proof of our, 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 our structure of our business. Um, that was simply it. P prepared the basic payment scheme application form and submitted that on the 15th of May, and we were accepted uh, for our application and received our payment in September of this year, and it was a very welcome boost. But that was an immediate op opportunity which we identified and were successful in achieving. Now, at the moment, the basic payment scheme in Scotland is under review. It was going to be under review anyway as a result of um, us looking to shift and change the structure of farming subsidies uh, post-2024. And right now, as we sit here today, we do not know what form the basic payment scheme will be in after 2024. But in the meantime, there is an opportunity for the next two to three years to take advantage of direct subsidy income streams through the basic payment scheme. In addition to that, um, pre, in, in 2015 and 16, there was the opportunity to apply for capital grants, uh, capital grants through the new entrant capital grant or young farmer startup grants. They offered yeah, capital money for carrying out fencing works, uh, for erecting sheds, for implementing new dynamic farming practices that would progress and, and push your business forward. Unfortunately, the budget, as we know at the moment, has not has been eroded and we, there are just no future grant schemes as we sit here today. That's not saying there won't be, but I think it's important that you keep in touch with your advisor or keep in touch with the Scottish Government website to see if any future capital grants may become available. available. There is grants through the Agri-Environment Climate Scheme that has run since 2015. It's been very successful, can be available to smallholders. It's a, a competitive system, a scheme with points awarded for undertaking a range of different practices across the holding. That can offer money from uh, creating hedges, creating hard standings, creating wild birdseed areas, gain cover, uh, it can be a, a huge attraction to businesses, but it's competitive. Again, we're not sure of the future of the scheme, given that we're looking to change the whole subsidy structure in 2024. But uh, again, I think it's important to keep in touch with your advisor if and when future rounds may become available. Coming, pulling it back to our holding here, we are looking to submit a potential scheme for creating hedges and indeed a potential pond creation uh, to enhance the environment, you know, the environmental habitats that we have already. You know, we want to enhance the wildlife corridors that we have. We want to create waterways. We want to look at the natural capital, I would call it, of our holding to look enhance that and, uh, you know, and create a linkage as well as, you know, focusing on our other enterprise, which I will get to eventually. We want to have an intrinsic link of, of habitats across the holding. And that can be done through potential grant assistance through the Agri-Environment Agri Climate Scheme. And finally, there's, there's no really other direct grant opportunities as we sit here today, but no doubt there'll be a release sort of a new grant scheme tomorrow or next week. So I reiterate, I think it's important to keep in touch with your advisor as to what and what grant opportunities are available moving forward. Pulling it back to ourselves again, so we looked at the grant opportunities, but what, what do we actually want to do in the ground? And where we're at right now is we've decided to have, you know, my wife has horses, she's looking at implementing a livery uh, uh, enterprise. We're also looking at doing, uh, running a small sheep flow. We do have 26 ewes as we sit here today. And the objective there is not to simply run a commercial sheep flock. If we were looking at um, a high output system with minimal inputs, so we're looking to target, you know, the pedigree markets. We're looking to target the, you know, the, the lamb box market to enhance the output. If we were simply selling lambs to the commercial market, we simply do not have the scale to, to justify the level of input required 
you know, 26 U's make a gross margin of circa 50 pounds per U in a commercial system on average. Whereas, you know, if you have a pedigree system, you can sell the, the well-known Valley Black Noses sell well, but they're a higher output targeted system and very much targeting a different sector. So that's the, the avenue we're, we're looking to go down. But I think when what, the first step we looked at was we put it all down on paper and I think you need to budget need to budget what you're wanting to do. You need to look at the cash requirement. I work as a, I work full time for Galbraith. My work and uh, my wife has a full time job elsewhere. It has to fit with your lifestyle. It has to fit the family. Um, it has to fit in with what you want to do in the holding. So I think you almost need to review where you are at the, from the very outset. What, what, what do you have? What time do you have? What finances do you have? What structure do you want? Again, get the right advice from your accountant, lawyers, and taxation on business structure. I think that's vital, getting the right advice. Um, so that's what we done. we we done a, a basic paper identifying what opportunities there are, like the basic payment scheme, like the sheep, like the horses, um, like the environment scheme. Uh, do that business basic review, budget yourself, pull all the together these points and then you know develop yourself an action plan of where you want to get to in the next year, two years, three years, 10 years. And that will give you a basis of the steps of where you want to get to. There's going to be challenges along the way, such as you know, planning permission, you know, getting the right advice on that. If you're erecting sheds, agricultural sheds, it's not just a simple case of putting a shed up. You need to get the right advice on that one. You need to look at water, electric, you need to look at a variety of measures depending on the option you're going to do. Access, if you're diversifying, say, through holiday lets, if you're going to put a pod up, it's not a case of simply putting a pod up either. What you know, what planning requirements are there? What structure are you going to set that up in? How is it going to run with your existing dynamics of, of the small holding? How is it going to fit in if you've got um, guests arriving uh, every day of the week? How is that going to affect your life? Is that the, the, the option you want to go down? So there's a number of challenges you've got to do, but I think you've got to get that basic review done first to say how you're at, where you're at, and, and what you're going to do going to do next. It's always a challenge in, in looking at new ideas. And you know, I had one client who had decided, right, we're going to put on 100 hens and they're going to lay eggs um, which they done, they did that very well, they laid a lot of eggs, we sold them to the local market, um, she was a primary school teacher, so as you had the market there already, but when you get to that scale, it's, you know, how do you refrigerate the egg, how do you date record the eggs, how do you, how do you market them, how do you, you know, get the replacements in, how do you look after the feedstock for the hens, how do you get rid of the hen litter, um, it's all these things that you've got to consider. One of the issues we had was, you know, actual storage uh, and, and, and maintenance of it because we were right next to a water course. Um, you know, the, we had less options for erecting hen sheds and storage. So you, you've got to consider all these options. Moving forward, I think it's, it's always important in our case we've made many mistakes, more, more mistakes than positives, to be honest, but I think it's always uh, you know, getting the, I reiterate again, is getting the advice and taking time to assess where you are. It's not going to happen in a day. I think you need to look at, you know, again, the long-term strategy, take your time and you will get there. But I think you've got to be realistic from my point of view that you can't do everything. You can't work a full-time job and have hens and have cattle and have sheep and have a wild bird seed meadow maintained all the time because uh, that that takes up a, a lot of your own time so it's got it it really has got to fit in with that um and it's getting that balance which is is really important so i think in the short you know we've had a great experience here we're in the very early stages yet we're not even uh, started a lot of the aspects we want to do here but um, it can happen, and, and but I think we always get ourselves very fortunate to have a, a great way of life. So, so how can Galbraith help? Um, I think Galbraith can help. We have a we have an agricultural sector division now. 
uh, colleague in Aberdeen, myself, um, and and throughout and throughout the UK, really, um, no no nonsense, straight talking advice is what I aim the firm to have. Being very honest, assessing the options for you, preparing and looking at grant applications is what we can do. Uh, coming in, doing an initial review for you, saying what the points are, what farming options is there, assisting uh, agri justification reports for plannings for house for houses. We've done a lot of that and been successful in doing that. Um, but I think uh, you know we just want to help. Uh, we yeah we do charge for that service, um, but we, you know, our, our aim is to help clients move forward and identify opportunities, and that's that's the principle of the consultant division of the firm. So I'd like to thank you for your time listening to me this morning. I hope I have made some sense, given it's been a video recording. I hope you have a good day this morning, and I'm very gutted not to be there myself. I've been there in the past previously, and the wealth of knowledge, experience, and range of different people that are there, I found really interesting. So I hope you have a good day. And please don't hesitate to get in touch with me. I might work in the Perth office. If you have any questions, please send me an email. And my details will be handed out after this presentation. Thank you.